Michael Grubb Evolved Ministry. And what's that? And um, we're out at Lake Monroe right now. Just cruising around, enjoying ourselves. We should probably close this up. It's really icy here. We'll probably include some clips from what just occurred because we just broke a bunch of ice for a bunch the of ice with rocks and it was a lot of fun. I'm down to the mud, you guys. <laughs> Look at all these rocks over here, like all the rocks we throw. You can only stand so much more. <laughs> oh. oh, you broke the rock. Uh. Oh, look at that. Oh, we got a whole crack. Ladies and gentlemen. We have just delayed this lake from freezing over. <laughs> and we got a full scale break. I am more proud than I've ever been in my entire life of anything <laughs> I've ever done. So the roads are all iced over. Everything is pretty much iced over. Cars. The water here at Lake Monroe is starting to freeze at the edges and that's where we were just breaking ice with rocks and it was so much fun and it's a fun way to release some stress and tension. Yep. We just had a good time and meditated by the water. Which is nice. Got a lot of, it was a, the whole thing was good, relaxing. And even though it's cold, we got bundled up winter clothes in her boots and went out in it so there's no excuses enjoyed every last second so what we're going to talk about now is donald trump now i find it absolutely incredible that there was a single person on american soil that actually voted for this man. Even one person. The other thing that blows my mind is the fact that they voted for the man even though the campaign that he ran was extremely sexist. times at one of his campaign speeches fights broke out all sorts of negativity occurred and he was outright creating division right in front of everybody and everything and people went for it people and loved it so it shows me where society has fallen how far it has fallen and it also shows me the, the general collective intelligence quotient at this point of society. If a man can run a campaign that is so visibly moronic, so visibly um, divisive and hateful, 
and they still gravitate towards it, then it lets me know that as a civilization, the 350 to 400 million Americans that are on this soil are absolutely insane. So, I'm starting to see that there is absolutely no remorse in a lot of American citizens. There is no more uh, conscience. And when I see how far it has actually devolved, from what point, I can't figure out. Because, um, you know, it's been gradually getting worse and worse. And there are some people... There's this guy named Prince EA. He's on YouTube. He's one of these people. The only way I can describe him is new age kind of guru leaning individual. He used to be a former rapper, but what he does is he loves, as far as I can tell, he loves to hear the sound of his own voice. And I'm not going to say that he is right or that he's wrong I'm not going to give him any of that but he's one of these people that are like oh I'm so happy so happy that Donald Trump got elected because this shows the sickness of our society and the only way that our society is going to learn anything is by looking themselves in the mirror and seeing just how far they've fallen but here's where I say that that is a completely inaccurate incorrect statement society's been going down this slope for a long time and if they elected in Donald Trump after the whole situation where we had the bankers who completely ruined this country if they voted him in after 9-11 where we clearly saw that our country went to war with the wrong country trying to bomb Iraq after we knew it was supposedly Afghanistan which actually most of the bombers quote-unquote were Saudi and if anyone has done their research they would know that almost none of that that almost every last bit of this was a fabricated situation I'm not going to get into the idea of whether 911 was a false flag or whether it was an inside job that is a whole different topic but I will say that after we watched that whole situation get bumbled the way it did and then it goes back backwards further 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 it gets nothing but worse I mean, if you look at history as a whole we've been going down this this slope for a very long time so here we are in 2016 going into 2017 having voted Donald Trump in and we've got all these new agers all these people out there saying well congratulations we voted Donald Trump in now we can finally look at ourselves and make these changes no if they were willing to vote Donald Trump in after all of the madness that we've already been through then chances are when Donald Trump leaves office they're just going to vote someone in even more disturbing, someone even more stupid. There will be no looking into the mirror because I can see the way Americans approach things now. If they purposefully chose someone who was outwardly 
negative, outwardly, outwardly racist, homophobic, throw all those things together, this shows exactly who Americans are and who they have always been. And this is what they have wanted for quite some time. They just wanted someone to come out and go, hey, I'm hateful. We know that you're hateful too. Jump on the hate train so we can go out there and do damage. That's what happened. And guarantee you, it's not going to get any better from this point. So applauding the idea that we got Donald Trump in as president because we think that it's going to show the sickness of our society and it's going to somehow reflect that back in the mirror, I guarantee you for the people out there who are thinking that way, you're thinking illogically. constantly ditches on minorities we'll, we'll get on around that too and let's just go for even the most logical thing which is our own drinking water our own clean drink drinking water and resources are being threatened by people who see no end to the amount of money that they can make now if you think of it logically and if you look at these things carefully you will see that what you did is you voted in a man who is only going to continue to enrich himself with his position as president. He does not care about you. Now, for all the racists 
who voted him in. Let me tell you something about that man. There was a lot of people, a lot of Nazis, neo-Nazis, Ku Klux Klan, all these people were celebrating. If you think that this man actually cares about your cause, yeah, he's racist, okay? He believes in some of the same stuff that you guys do, but if you think that he cares about you, he doesn't. He looks down on you about as much as he looks down on any race that he thinks is inferior to himself. He doesn't even care about white people. He cares about him. And he will use you guys as a stepping stone to enrich himself further. A lot of those Nazis thought right after they elected Trump in, oh yeah, Donald Trump, our president is here. Sieg Heil to Donald Trump. You guys, don't you understand that you are a means to an end and he will trade you off as quickly as a person does when they're trying to buy a new car. He does not care about you. He doesn't care about your silly little cause. And essentially what you did to yourself was you ensured that you're going to make it easy for him to rip off the middle class. And that's what most of you guys are. That's what most of um, the white supremacy movement is made of. Blue collar, middle class, hardworking folk. Well, guess what? Now you've made it so that he's going to siphon everything that he can from you the same way that they did uh, in the 2007 uh, stock market crash. Believe me, that man's gonna be fixing things up to where he's taken from the middle class as much as humanly possible. Soon, it'll be more polarized to where you have primarily lower class people and then upper class people, but the middle class will either go one way or the, the other. And for the most part, if he does things the way that I think he's gonna do, more people are gonna be dumped from the middle class into the lower class than they will the upper class. So, you guys got used. And if you think that he cares about you, number one, he doesn't know you. And that's another thing that I want all voters out there to realize because you guys always sit there and support your candidates as if you guys are best friends with these people. I know. And it's always like, this candidate talks about this. They talk about that. Or, you know, they could say whatever and people would believe it and like have them more than, you know, like 90% of the time. None of that stuff is followed through with. None of those people that were supposedly groups, <laughs> the uh, groups that they supposedly support or whatever, they don't do crap for them once they get elected in. I mean, like, it's all just a facade. It's all just to try to reel you in and try to get your vote, but then in the end, do they do anything to make your life any better? No, hell no. They never do. They never do. And so but what cracks me up is a lot of you people believe that your undying loyalty to these candidates is going to get you invited over to their, their homes for dinner. And basically, even if that were to happen, all they would do is feed you the table scraps that they would give to their dogs. That's how much they care about you. But you guys literally will fight one another, brother against brother. I'm Republican. I'm a Democrat. Do you realize that these people, the Democrats and the Republicans, they're all shaking hands behind closed doors. They all drink and eat at the same tables. They're all sipping from the same champagne and hanging out with one another. And they could care less about the working man. Those people, the Democrats and Republicans, aren't at all against each other. They're on the same side. Give me a coin. I don't have one. Okay. Great. Stuck. All right. Tails. Heads. Democrat. Republican. One government. One coin. Guess what? When I go to a grocery store, when I spend this coin, they get the whole one coin. They don't get to decide, I want the tail side of that one. No, I want the head side of that one. It's an illusion, folks. The idea that you are voting for some sort of a separate system within the same one system is ludicrous. They are playing roles. 
And it's funny because the majority of Americans never seem to get that. Do you understand, like, the very first time they elected in an actor, it was Ronald Reagan. That should have been, at that particular point, red flag. that should have been a red flag. You guys should have known back then that there was something wrong if they were willing to vote in an actor. Someone who has no politics skills whatsoever, but you vote in an actor and then he became your president of the United States. That should have been a red flag. Donald Trump literally was a reality show actor. Okay, yes, he's he's a businessman and he's done stuff before, but most of the money that he earned, guess what? That was his family. His families, they've always been rich. They've always been millionaires. That man has sunk more businesses than the Titanic going under. That dude is not good at what he does. What about Arnold Schwarzenegger too? Arnold Being elected Schwarzenegger. governor of California and he was an actor. Actor. Again, and people, because they like that persona. Oh, I've seen him on television. Television, folks, come on. Expect better from your, your supposed uh, public servants. You should expect better, but you don't. Do Americans actually deserve better at this point than them? I don't know. We gotta start using our heads collectively. Donald Trump is a misogynist. He's a sexist. He's a racist. He's a homophobe. And me personally, you know, I understand that everyone has their own idea of the way the world should look. You know, we are all flesh and blood. All of us make mistakes. Um, and if you have certain um, ideas, you know, I can't blame you if you're a racist. You want to be a racist, fine. I don't blame you if you're, you're a sexist. I don't blame you if you're any of those things, but you personally should expect more from the guy who is running the entire country. And as a president, you would expect more professionalism from a person. Donald Trump is anything but professional. Now, one of the things that got um, discussed right before he became president, and he, he couldn't deny it, he literally said, and this was, uh, it was all over the papers, one of the things that he liked to do when it came to women was literally grab them by their lower region. Unfricking believable. It came out of the man's mouth. He really said it. That's actually completely unacceptable. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the pussy. I could do anything. People knew that he said this. People knew that that's the way he looks at the female gender. An object. Something that you can just grab and toss away at any given point. And he knew. And then the other thing that he said is, oh, women love it. He said they love it when they see someone who has power and authority and wealth. And so they love it when uh, you just grab them that way. Now, Americans saw this, and then they still chose to go and cast their vote for a man of this caliber. This dude probably has the IQ of 80. All right, just because he's wealthy doesn't mean he's smart. There's a lot of people out there that seem to equate wealth with intelligence. That is not true. Again, the majority of his money came from his family. Inheritance. Inheritance and the family name. That man has the intelligence of a freaking slug. And yet, Americans voted that in. When you saw the debates, that should have been a red flag. The dude could not answer questions about foreign policy with any intelligence. He didn't know anything about domestic policy. He didn't know how 
to uh, retort to any of Hillary Clinton's answers. And she's not the brightest. Okay, I wouldn't have wanted her in office either. I think both of uh, those people were a complete mockery of the electoral process. And I think that should have been a red flag right there as well to Americans. They should have asked for better from the very beginning. Americans should have asked, they should have demanded for better than that. But again, Americans really don't, they, they, they don't question anything. They just accept the reality that is presented to them. Oh, well, these are going to be the only two. Oh, well, you got to vote the lesser of the evils. When you vote the lesser of two evils, guess what you're voting for? Evil. You should have demanded something better from the jump. Are you telling me 350 million Americans or 400 million Americans couldn't get better if they demanded it and stood up and said, make this right? Yes, they could have gotten something better. But instead, oh, well, this is unfortunate. We're down to two candidates. Two candidates that none of us really want in office. I'm not sighing because of that. So, we got to start thinking a little more critically, far more crucially. How many more times are we going to allow ourselves to have moronic candidates in there that's going to do nothing but harm? How many more times are we going to allow them to provide uh, a substandard people as candidates for the presidency of the United States? We're talking about the presidency of the United States. Now, make no mistake, I personally don't believe that the president really has that much authority anyway. It's pretty obvious to me who's calling the shots, corporations are, they're the ones that are making all the rules, they're the ones that are making all the policies, and they enforce and policy, these policies through uh, the economy. And then what the presidents do is they act as the delivery boy of those policies from the policy makers, i.e. the corporations, to the common man, which is supposedly us. Now, here we are, this day and age, we're almost in 2017, we now have Donald Trump as the President of the United States. This is a mockery. The rest of the world is looking at us and pretty much laughing. And to be honest, there are a lot of people are thinking that these are the last days of the empire. Now, I have a question to pose. Let's just say, because there's a whole lot of um, banter going back and forth as to whether, you know, uh, Trump is affiliated with Putin, the Russians, whatnot. Now, if you know what the one world government is, or a lot of people call it the new world order, it really doesn't matter, okay? Because... There's really only one government running this entire thing anyway, and I'm talking about the entire world. They make it look like there's nation states, but there really isn't. These are things that basically just keep our minds occupied to the idea that we still have some sort of a vote, okay? But let's just say that the U.S. actually does start going downhill now. Let's just say that all of a sudden we start losing our grip upon... Uh, the way policies are done on a global scale. What if these are the empire's last days? How are you going to accept that in your head knowing that you went and casted a vote for someone like Donald Trump? Are you going to admit to the fact that you were the beginning of the end of the way the United States is seen? Are you going to be the one to admit that the United States was at one point a very powerful nat nation that 
now has become a mockery because of the person that you voted into office? Are you gonna take uh, full responsibility for that? Guaranteed that none of you will. Wasn't my fault, I didn't have anything to do with it. And a lot of people think that their civic duty lies in voting. So you go every freaking four years, you cast your, your um, opinion of who should be in office, and then that's the end of it. You walk off, and then whatever happens, happens. If you think that that's doing your civic duty, because a lot of people are always, well, if you vote, you don't have a right to say otherwise. If you don't vote, then you didn't participate, then you're the reason why the country is sliding into uh, hell. Actually, I would say it's the other way around. If you vote and the country goes into a state of hell, okay, then you basically gave your approval. You said, sure, this is exactly what I want. Your civic duty does not end up voting. Participation, true participation is mandatory. And I mean, I'm talking a real participation in not only the electoral process, but the way that your system operates as a general whole. We've now let it become a thing that is ran almost entirely by the military, uh, the military industrial complex and corporations. Politicians don't have much to do with anything anymore. Like I said, they're just the delivery boys. They're telling us what's going on. They're just actors, like you said. I thought. They're actors literal actors and this is the type of people that they want they want people who are actors that can act under any form of pressure tell us what we need to hear and then they're the ones who absorb all the negativity when something goes wrong you don't even think that it's the bankers you don't even think that it's the corporations you completely ignore that idea and then if something goes wrong oh it's Obama's fault He's the one that screwed up the economy. If something is wrong, oh, it's Bush's fault. He's the one that sent us to war. Actually, Bush probably had nothing to do with sending us to war. Corporations are. Corporations are the ones that profit. Bush himself, I mean, he makes money off a lot of the oil, and Cheney made a lot of money off of the uh, military stuff that was sold. Now, what'd you say, honey? You said Halliburton. Halliburton. One of the corporations that benefit from war and... Yep, Carlisle Group. There's a lot. So, and those people are affiliated with them, but at the end of the day, all those um, are decisions made by corporations. This is the reason why, like for instance, uh, Obama. How many people on his cabinet work for Monsanto? They do things and they pass laws that are beneficial for corporations to continue to do business. That's what they do. And Americans are so far out of the loop of how things operate, they actually believe that when they go and they vote every four years, they have done something good. You've done nothing, nothing, except cast your opinion about something. And then if it's not a popular opinion, if it's not opinion that the corporations want to hear, your name goes on a list. So what you're doing every time that you participate is you're ensuring that your name goes down on a freaking list and they can track exactly what type of purchases you make, what kind of decisions that you make, how much you spend, and how important you are on a general whole. So all you're doing is giving demographic information out. That's it. Voluntarily. Because guess what? They've pretty much proven that it doesn't matter whether the popular vote is won. You can get the entire freaking country voting for one person and if the electoral college decides that it's going to be something different guess what it's going to be something different popular vote doesn't matter they tell you that with each election it doesn't matter the electoral college is going to make the the final say so they're telling you that your vote means nothing now what honey so we should have filmed that sign there was a sign there that said uh expel pence <laughs> yeah Trump's yeah. VP, right? Yes, he is. And there are just signs all over Bloomington, and I'm assuming probably other places in Indiana, too, um, just saying, like, fire pens. And people here just do not like him. I mean, and he was... This is his home state, yeah. Indiana. his home state, you know, and now he's VP. 
Hillary Clinton, I believe she got the popular vote. I believe back in 2000, 2001, I can't remember exactly, but uh, when Bush went against Gore, Gore won the popular vote. Guess what ended up happening? Didn't really matter because the Electoral College uh, stepped in. The other thing was is there was uh, some sort of discrepancy in Florida where, of course, uh, Jeb Bush was the governor. Okay, Jeb Bush, George Bush, brothers, and they made sure that George won the popular vote. And then when it got sent to the uh, Supreme Court, the Supreme Court said, ah, we're going to go ahead and uh, support anything that Bush says. They had already had the Supreme Court pretty much bought out. Remember, this is corporate. So in other words, your vote never mattered. They don't care about who you go up and line up for. All they're doing is getting demographics. That is it. Now, again, what blows my mind, because, you know, ultimately, you guys did not vote in Trump, but there was enough people out there who actually supported this man, and that is what really blows my mind about all of this, is that regardless that this man have has absolutely no experience, regardless of the fact that he is a racist, that he is sexist, again, no experience, homophobe, and has all these violent tendencies, people actually still supported that. So what does that say about us? What does that say about the majority of Americans who actually voted that sort of a mentality in? What does that say about the, <clears throat> the actual direction and um, status of this country? What do you think it says? Stupidity. I, the fact that he even got as far as he did, like the second he even was like, you know, one of the candidates, everyone in media should have been like, no, 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 no. You sit down, shut up, shut your mouth. We don't want to hear it, we don't care. Hell no, never, no way. But he, like, got into, you know, the final, whatever you want to call it, the last two people <laughs> running, and he freaking won. That, to me, is just insane. And people are, I, I don't know. And then the fact that they allowed it to happen, like, the next day, what should have happened was, is, like, everybody <laughs> show up at the White House and just like kick him out like you can leave now but and that didn't happen nothing of course. Happened, there was no yeah. more no real outrage I mean there was people who made a stink about it but no I real know. outrage they made their Facebook posts like oh who let's we, get united <laughs> whatever okay and then are you gonna nothing. do something about it nope nope we'll just talk about it. We'll just post about it and act like we care. And make other people think that we care because that's important. Yeah, as long as you put a post up on Facebook and as long as everyone pats each other on the back and says, we'll get through this and yada yada blah blah. I always see all of these things. I see people talking it that way and I never see action behind it. This is actually what I was talking about when it, in regards to Prince EA earlier. So let's go back to that for just a moment. Here's this guy who gets on YouTube. He seems to be getting a lot of funding behind him as well, which is, it, it's, I remember when he first started, um, things were one way, it was very simplistic, but now all of a sudden he's doing all of these little sketches with tons of money behind him. And he's saying all of these wonderful things that seem progressive, okay? Um, he talks about a lot of new age philosophies. And again, he talked about Trump. I'm so happy he, Trump got elected because now we can look at each other into the mirror and see that we as a society are sick and that we need change. 
Okay, that's all fine and good. That's that's cute. Okay, I've seen a lot of this man's uh, stuff, and it's 100% talk with absolutely zero action behind it. Zilcho. So basically, what he's saying is, I'm going to throw out all these wonderful words that are cleverly put together and make it sound like I'm very philosophical but I expect you to do the work I'm going to do nothing here's what I'm saying run with it folks and unfortunately that's what the new age is we have everyone who's doing a whole lot of talking and no one who actually is made of any action whatsoever and that's the reason why we are now in an age where Donald Trump is president of the United States because there is no action behind all of these cleverly woven words and all these little philosophies because everyone sounds like they are a guru when they're uh, writing a whole bunch of beautiful things on Facebook, social media, just sharing things back and forth. And they're like, oh yeah, yeah, I like that. I really like that. I'm gonna click. Yeah, spread the message. The message gets spread and no action gets done. No action is taken. So everyone pats each other on the back. Oh yes, we're, we're spreading the love. Oh, it's so easy. We're spreading the... Share button. Yeah, we're spreading the message and we're spreading the love. And if we stay unified and come together and do something, then uh, we will be able to make all these changes that are necessary. But again, no changes ever get made. I've seen the same philosophies get spoken of for, I don't know, how old am I now? 43 years old? Ever since I've kept track, I've watched people talk about, be the change that you want to see. Do this, do that. But it never gets done. And from what I see from Prince EA, he is one of those people that constantly feed that same cycle. Let's, let's all stand together and unify and, and look at ourselves and see the changes that we need to make and then let's just all sit on it and do nothing about it and pat each other on the back for listening to each other back and forth. That is all worthless to me. It's useless. Action is what it takes. And a lot of people ask me, what do I do then? Michael Grubb. Michael Grubb, you're talking about all this action. What do you do that is made of action? Do I just sit on my butt too? Do I just talk and don't feed the situation that produces change? Actually what I do is I directly teach people how to make changes. I directly teach people to take action upon their own lives so that way if they want to create change that they know the direction and the path to do it. I myself go out there and I try to work all the time on creating change. If I see litter on the ground, guess what I do? Pick it up. I pick it up. If I see um, people mistreating each other and beating each other, do I stand by idly and let that happen? Do I let the violence continue? Do I just call 911, tuck my tail and run? No, I become a direct part of that situation. I break it up. When there was an uh, accident not long ago with uh, some guy basically plowed two people over who were on a um, scooter. Some guy was going about 65 miles per hour and he just blazed these people right over. Most people, what would they have done? They would have stepped off to the side. They wouldn't have enacted whatsoever they would have probably tried to call 911 but by that point everything would have been it would have been too late yeah they would have already been run over by cars and stuff it was nighttime and you guys stood out in the middle we, of the road and like stopped cars without having any like headlights on or anything to, and it was nighttime while it was raining and we got right in the middle of it so what do I do I am a direct action person what do I do to make changes upon the earth? Again, I jump right in and make those changes. <sighs> if we could have people who were made of direct action on this planet 
stand up and actually start doing things, this place would be so much better. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've read about um, women who were killed or raped. They're literally screaming, help, help, save me. And what do passerbyers do? They can sit there and watch it and they won't do anything about it because they expect that someone else will make that call for them. They expect, oh, well, you know, I'm just gonna keep walking because I don't wanna be a part of this. And surely someone else will call in because I mean, it's obvious that something bad is happening. By the time someone ever gets there, the woman is already battered, beaten, raped, dead, or whatever. You can look this up, it is a common thing. What ends up happening is, is everyone thinks that someone else will take action. So no one takes action at all. That's the type of society we live in. There was a man not too long ago, it was in Canada. Full, a bus full of people. One man decapitates another while on the bus. Guy walks right up, takes a freaking hunter's knife and kills this dude, stabs him multiple times and cuts his head off right in front of everybody. That's gotta take a while too, to just like actually cut someone's head off. Cut someone's head off. off. So like, all the time that it took for him to do that, nobody stopped him. Not a single person. No one stood up. No one did anything. No one enacted. That's the type of society we live in. We have a lot of people who like to talk and run their mouths. Everyone's always talking, yeah, be the change, be the change that you want to see. Okay, um, look yourself in the mirror, make that change, do this, do that. But all we have in this world now are people who are inactive, who are apathetic, and who do not care. Would I have stepped in if that situation had happened? Well, the scent knows me well enough. Um, I can tell you this 100%, and anyone who knows me in Bloomington, Indiana, who's ever met me knows Heck yes, I would have stepped right in with a dude getting his head cut off in front of me. Heck yes, I would have stepped in, even if it meant my own head. Absolutely yes. But what kind of a person are you? Because again, I see tons of people talking the talk and they talk all the time. It's you know, All the words sound good. The philosophy sounds great. They sound like they're really a part of the vehicle for change. But if that were the case, would we actually have Donald Trump as president of the United States right now? You ask yourself that. And for all the people out there who listen to people like Prince EA and who think that this guy is making some sort of headway, he's not. All he's doing is regurgitating the same new age bullcrap that gets us nowhere out there. Direct action is what is needed. We need to strengthen our minds. We have to strengthen our souls and actually get some volition, get some internal strength. We have to fortify ourselves. And there are not many people who are willing to do that. But everyone sounds, like I said, everyone sounding like a new age guru or a Dalai Lama or uh, some sort of wise man from India because I see it all the time on Facebook everyone's always Facebooking all these wonderful ideas about change and and love and and making all sorts of new strides to create a better world and I see no one actually enacting to do it this is how we find ourselves with guys like Donald Trump in the presidency so think about it you're welcome to write and tell me what you think um, you know personally I've watched this happen for a long period of time and I've been a part of watching politics and enacting in it for a very long time I've been I've seen the conspiratorial aspects of the world and been a part of studying this for close to well over uh, 20 years at yeah, least yeah <laughs> like 25 years and i have definitely made as much i've taken action on many occasions 
and I want to know number one what do you think needs to be done what do you think needs to happen in order for change to be made you're welcome to tell me uh, I'm right you're welcome to tell me I'm wrong but ultimately if you're gonna tell me that I'm wrong then tell me what you would personally do to make things better if you think that my opinion is incorrect then I want to see you know a message that says you're incorrect Michael and here's why and this is what can be done this is what should be done or this is what is being done um, personally as you can see this is one of my more outspoken videos where I'm actually giving my hardcore opinion on something and as you guys know I don't really deliver much in that on that route mm -hmm. but I want to see what you guys have to say in, in regards to this and share this send it to other people like I said you can like it you can hate it if you hate it fine tell me where I've gone wrong a lot of people out there I can tell you now are going to dislike what I said about Prince EA because a lot of people out there he's a popular dude but all I see in that particular guy is a guy who's gotten some funding behind him I see a man who does a whole lot of talking and uh, basically weaves very pleasant words together to sound like um, a very wise philosophical human being that has absolutely no action behind his words if I am mistaken feel free to show me how I'm mistaken about this guy um, Again, I don't dislike him, nor do I like him. I don't know him. But what I see from him and many of the followers are a whole bunch of people that pat each other on the back. And a whole lot of people that basically say, oh yeah, this guy, he's so smart, he's so intelligent, he's so this, he's so that, but I see absolutely no action, no progress behind all of the beautiful words that he speaks. I just see a dude who is absolutely profiting off of all the people who seem to think that he's some sort of a guru. That's it.